just one last thing that you agree were with that. About. We both agree with John. Yeah, I think I, I think we agree on most stuff. The, you know, you said, well, if it's tested against a placebo, and this I think is why people like me are suspicious, are reticent. Um, the Oxford vaccine, which is, you know, was the is the other leader. It's, uh, Gates has a huge investment in it. Fauci is pushing it. It is the leader. AstraZeneca is now, you know, is branding it. Well, that vaccine is, is run by a guy called Greg Pollard, who is at Oxford, a very, very famous, powerful uh, virologist. He originally promised at the beginning, he said, we're going to test it against the placebo. We're going to do what's never been done in vaccinology before. We're going to actually use an inert placebo and test it. Mm -hmm. And then in the middle of his phase two, he said, no. We're going to test it against the meningitis vaccine. The meningitis vaccine is a vaccine with a really high injury profile. It has a listed just on its manufacturing insert are 50 deadly serious injuries, including Kawasaki disease, um, guillain barre paralysis, seizure, heart attacks, and death, and, and hepatitis, and all kinds of autoimmune disease. It's probably... It's arguably the most dangerous vaccine. So instead of giving his placebo group an inert placebo, he's giving them the most dangerous vaccine he can. Why? It's a ploy that vaccinologists use. And they give their placebo group something that's horrendously dangerous to mask injuries in the vaccine. And, you know, and so everybody on my side sees this and they say, he's not being honest. He, we do not know what the risk profile of that product is. We are never going to mm -hmm. take that product because it was never tested against a placebo. Make mm -hmm. them do the science. Don't say to, you know, get angry at people who are skeptical and say, oh, you're skeptical. We're watching the sausage get made and it's an ugly but process. And by the way, he gave that vaccine to a bunch of monkeys, you know, macaques. And then, and then, he exposed, he challenged the macaques by exposing them to the wild coronavirus. Yeah, yeah. And all of the macaques got sick. So the vaccine but, doesn't work. But because the British government put 90,000 pounds into it, he now is in order to make 2 million doses with a vaccine we know doesn't work. And they're going forward with it anyway. And he refuses to test it against the placebo. So that gives us zero faith. Right. Process. So let, let me first of all say nobody should be angry at you. People should be praising you for bringing this to the attention of the American public. Let me just summarize, if I can, my view, and then you can get the last word. Uh, I am thrilled that we had this debate. I think the public watching the debate has learned. Uh, we've learned how much we agree about. We're both libertarians. We both agree with John Stuart Mill that the government shouldn't be compelling you to do anything just for your own good, but they can compel you to do things that prevent harm to others. Uh, we have some disagreements about uh, uh, mandates. Uh, I think we both agree that any vaccine should start out by being offered voluntarily. We both agree that people should um, be offered the vaccine initially and take it on a voluntary basis. And that mandatory vaccination, which presents very daunting moral and constitutional issues, should not be required until it's proved absolutely necessary by the consensus of medical opinion. Um, I think we also agree that the First Amendment and the spirit of the First Amendment requires that this debate continue. And so I'm pleased that we had this debate. Uh, you've persuaded me about some of the medical issues. I will look further into medical issues. I don't think I've persuaded you on the constitutional issues, and I know you haven't persuaded me on the constitutional issues. I still take the position, although in a democracy, the courts do have the final word, that I do believe that if there were legislation mandating in extreme circumstances with safety and other considerations taken into account, um, mandatory vaccination, I do believe the Supreme Court would and should uh, uphold mandatory vaccination under those circumstances. That's the major area we disagree with. But in practical terms, I suspect we don't have a lot of disagreement that will come to fruition in the next year or so, because in the next year, the big issue will be how to get the vaccine voluntarily 
to as many people as possible who are willing to take it. And so thank you for putting together this debate. I think it really was informative. And thank you, Robert, for uh, accepting the uh, idea of debating on this issue. Thank you, Alan. And I, I, I want to express my gratitude to you on behalf of myself and everybody in this community. You know, people who are, who are called anti-vax, they're mainly not anti-vaxxing. You know, almost all of them are the mothers and fathers of intellectually disabled kids who gave all the vaccines, who did what they were told, and then their child was injured, and, they, and that prompted them to go out and do the research. Those people should be allowed to speak. Those people should not be gagged. They should not be okay. shut up. They should not be taught, considered heretics. They should be allowed to tell their story, and they should be treated with compassion and understanding and patience and an intellectual openness toward their stories. They shouldn't be vilified. They shouldn't be gaslighted. They shouldn't be ignored. And right now, particularly at a point in our history where we're talking about giving lots of people this vaccine, their stories are more important to hear than ever. I want to thank you, as for 15 years, all of us have been trying to do a debate. And we haven't been able to get Peter Hotez to do it. We haven't been able to get Paul Offit, Ian Lipkin, any of the leaders have been, have been scared to sit where you are now. And I want to thank you so much on behalf of all of us, but also our democratic traditions for coming here. Thank you, Alan. Well, thank you, Robert. Gentlemen, one thing I do want to say is I'm glad I got through my 28 questions with you guys. It was uh, very <laughs> good. And uh, uh, I know one thing is uh, we have to make this disclaimer that this, this uh, debate is not sponsored by Viagra, even though Robert <laughs> brought up Viagra. And I'll make sure next time we're in uh, Boston I avoid taking you to my favorite sushi spot since you are anti-fish. I had no clue until today's debate that Robert is anti-fish. Uh, and by the way, based on how this goes, if the audience comes back, we may reach out to you for part two again. If there's other topics, we can uh, touch up. Happy that to with this. Happy Alan, to thank you so much for your time. Robert, thank you so much for your time. Take care, everybody. Appreciate you guys. Thank you. Thank you very much, Patrick. So can you imagine for 15 years, Robert Kennedy has been waiting for one person to want to debate the issue of vaccine, and Alan Dershowitz, the attorney, constitutional lawyer, finally said yes, and this took place. You had a chance to watch both of them go at it. I'm curious to know if either one of them changed your mind. Comment below. And on top of that, you know what I'd like to see take place is to get someone who's a doctor, any one of them, Offit, Ho Hotez, anybody that you would like to see debate, go on Twitter and tweet them and myself saying we'd like to see a debate. Robert Kennedy on Valuetainment. And outside of that, look, I got two other interviews I want you to watch. One of them is my full interview I did with Robert Kennedy, which is an even deeper interview on the topic of vaccine than this one. If you've not watched it, click over here. And the other one is a, a, a debate format that we had about a year ago where we had two folks come, somebody who was from U.S. Navy Intelligence and another person that was a director of a developmental director from Normal, and they debated marijuana. We went to cocaine, alcohol, very, very good debate live right here in my office. If you've not watched that, click over here. And if this topic of vaccine is important to you, you are directly or indirectly affected by this, help share this video and the topic started out there by people talking about it, whether you're pro or anti, share this video with others, Facebook, Twitter, text, whatever it may be, so we can get a lot of eyeballs so people start talking about this debate as we're getting closer to a possibility of a mandated vaccine for coronavirus. And if you enjoyed the video today, please click the subscribe button. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.